Hello learners, this is Pradeep Naik here, CEO of Fuel Media Solutions Private Limited. I welcome you all to another exciting session on event management. Today we're going to talk about risk management process. We already started talking about risk management process in my previous session and we discussed about risk assessment and risk evaluation in that. Today we're going to talk about risk evaluation and management plan. That's the main topic. We are also going to touch upon risk control and we are also talking about risk reporting. With these three topics, we end the entire uh, uh, chain of sessions that we conducted on risk management. Allow me to share this presentation, which will be easier for you to understand what we are going to talk about today. So, as I mentioned, we are going to talk about planning for risk prevention and management. So, risk prevention and risk management is the next big step in the risk management process. And these are made to combat the identified risk or their probability or consequences. In this step, a risk manager uses all his resources to ensure the success of the event. So um, what it states is that um, the risk prevention and management process that we apply here as a part of the risk management process is purely on the risk that we are able to identify, the risk that we are able to uh, kind of uh, list out even before the event. So these are the things that we can do and we can plan for the prevention of it. So how do we uh, use different methods to treat such risk? First, it's very simple. First one is elimination. The steps can be taken in the plan to eliminate the risk altogether. For example, erecting covered walkways to protect spectators from rain to eliminate the risk of ruining an event due to rain. Exactly. So this is a very simple example, but a very easy example that has been given. So um, steps that we do is like um, there are a lot of risks that we identify uh, at the beginning of the event. So by taking a proper preventive measures, we'll be able to eliminate that risk completely. So we can do that at the time of identifying risk. So the first step is elimination. So how do we eliminate this? Simple, if people are getting wet during the rain, they'll not be able to enjoy the show. So what do you do? Is take care by putting up a shelter at the pathway. Substitution, to avoid the risk of collapse of structures due to overcrowding, temporary structures can be substituted by choosing a better design grandstand made of concrete. Now this again is subject to the kind of venue that we're gonna work. So substitution is, for example, if I'm doing a stage, and if it's a seven feet stage or an eight feet stage that we're gonna use in terms of height, then I'll have to also keep in mind uh, the, uh, the structure of the stage, how it is done and everything. At the time of like, if anything goes wrong and if it collapses, what is the backup? So is the stage put up on a concrete structure so that in case it falls or it collapses, there is a concrete structure as a cushioning. So we have to take care of all this. So substitution or the second option is what we have to see. So uh, making a concrete thing new instead of that thing is might be a little challenging or might be expensive. But it's an example that has been suggested. Distribution of risk. Sometimes risk can be distributed across different areas to reduce its impact. For example, ticketing can be spread over different areas to reduce the impact of any theft. Exactly. So um, this is a good example for distribution of risk. Um, we always know at the time of uh, ticketing, one is um, gathering of crowd. Um, and uh, we, since you will not be able to handle so much crowd in like just a few counters. So how do you do is that you, if there's 1000 people that we're going to expect, then you make sure that you have 10 counters or 20 counters, depending upon the kind of crowd who's going to come. And second thing is, if it is completely a cash uh, managed ticket counter, then we have to divide it so that in case there is any kind of a theft or anything that happens, then we have multiple control centers to cover that. So distribution of risk. Second is isolation. So risky activities or use of noise equipment can be done as to avoid risk like fire accident. Uh, so isolation is, for example, uh, where we uh, you know, park the generators, where we're going to you know, uh, keep the diesel. So uh, a lot of times what happens is the backstage, the generator is parked, backstage, the diesel cans are kept for the generator and all those things happen. So you are increasing the uh, probability of your risk by doing that. So rather what we do is we do a safe and secure place for generators to park. We do a safe and secure, like you keep the diesel away. And in case of any risk or mishap that happens with the generator, at least the diesel containers next to them are taken care that it doesn't go up and fire because it's kept at a certain distance or it is covered amongst sand and kept and all those things. So isolation is another way that we can prevent risk. Second is, uh, the fourth one is engineering control. They can be effectively used to reduce various risks. For example, using safety barriers and fences can limit access and can be used effectively for controlling management ground. 
So exactly, engineering controls is what we say is that um, like if people who have not taken tickets who try to enter the venue, so how would you safeguard is by putting barrication. How do you, um, you know have a sound uh, that is on the ground doesn't uh, you know directly impact our listeners. Use you by, uh, by using trussing or by using scaffolding, we uh, hang the sound from a certain height so that it directly doesn't impact or create any kind of risk for the listeners in the first few rows. So many such engineering controls can be implemented to prevent any kind of risk in that particular area. Administrative control, various administrative controls like erecting warning signs and training staff well in safety procedures can help in reducing the risk. This is something which I think um, as a part uh, when we're doing the identifying the risk, uh, when we are doing a meeting with different stakeholders who are involved in uh, executing the event, uh, this is the, I think, um, we uh, is a very important point that has been uh, that will be discussed and has to be discussed is about training the staff on different safety measures the staff who is working there has to wear proper gear for example wearing proper uh, you know uh, shoes or wearing proper helmet or something or wearing if they are doing scaffolding work they should have enough uh, police and everything safety equipment that they are already wearing everything has to be taken care of so that there is any kind of mishap can be averted and that will not further create any risk in terms of executing the event. Contingency methods. They are effective in dealing with situations in which risk cannot be completely avoided. For example, developing exit doors, evacuation routes, and provision of firing extinguishers. So, see it, uh, if it is a fire, it is a fire. If it is a stampede, it is a stampede. Things which cannot be controlled, or if it is something that goes wrong. But how can, what is the contingency method for that? Is creating good amount of exit doors, creating good amount of ramp, uh, for people with disability, creating good amount of signages, uh, creating a good amount of extinguishes. The risk. So contingency plans or methods to be in place to uh, avoid any kind of risk, and that is a part of risk prevention. Or risk transfer. Subcontractors can be hired to share the liability for different components like equipment structure. So as in when, when we hire different stakeholders to execute the event, so if it is a kind of overwhelming or it is a kind of overburdening on a particular vendor, ensure it is equally uh, divided amongst the, the subcontractors. So the level of risk that is taken by this one person because of overworking, people are like working day and night at the venue. So because of overworking, it should not happen that a person uh, kind of neglects or uh, kind of um, um, uh, oversees a few risks that is uh, there in his purview of area that he is operating. For example, people were working on fabrication for two days, two nights, uh, like towards the end of second night, they're completely uh, tired. They're not able to they're just working like machine. So how do we overcome is that have enough subcontract, have enough manpower so that uh, they don't oversee or they, they or don't or skip any part of the uh, risk uh, my, uh, no process that we going to involve all the safety training that we take. So risk prevention and uh, management plans um, are prepared separately for each of the event because each event in itself is a different uh, setup altogether in terms of organizing it and in terms of executing it. But uh, so every event actually requires a tailor-made risk management plan. And but there are three main components that we have to uh, like or three main categories that we have to divide that plan into. So the risk management plan can be further divided into three main. That is one is preventive plan or plan to uh, minimize the risk. Contingency plan and crisis plan. This is very so. Uh, whatever your prevention will happen will happen under these three categories. Under these three categories, we will talk about how in detail we'll do it. That will go into the next level. But right now, yes. So whenever you're pre uh, preparing a prevention plan for the uh, event risk, so these are the one is preventive plan. Was kind of when that is something that you can do so that we can avoid it completely. It doesn't happen. One is when it happens, what do you do? There's contingency. And what is what happens after it happens? Like all the contingency is done and everything is done, still things happen, then what do we do? So crisis plan. So these are the three important uh, parameters or categories. Let's discuss uh, this in detail. So let's start with preventive plan. So event risk management professional must understand that it is always less expected risk prior to the event that to deal with the crisis after it has occurred. That means, it is always less expensive to manage risk prior to the event than to deal with the crisis after it has occurred. So it is always good to spend that additional 30 minutes, one hour, two hours, three hours, brainstorming and finding out what things can go wrong rather than you know uh, feeling sorry a little later. It's like this, you know, precautions are better than cure things like that. Yeah. Let us see how uh, we can use the preventive plans, for example, such as making an event design. So the first thing is selecting event lo location. So the, the location of the event is considered as the 
uh, in relation to services infrastructure so the location that we choose so when we choose the location itself we should know what are the things that is going to happen in that location depending on as i told you one common example that i give like if you're doing an event on top of a hill if you're doing an event uh, next to the river if you're doing next to the sea so you know you have chosen a venue which is high on risk then if you're doing that uh, or if you're doing an event in some uh, like remote forest or an uh, area then you have to see what are the risks do you have enough uh, you no know, roads that you can connect at times of emergency uh, is it well connected uh, is there uh, like there are phones access etc so all these things so when you're finalizing the lo location all these things has to be connected uh, no uh, thought about so this comes under your preventive plan or plan to minimize risk provision of access and uh, sterile roads so as i mentioned when you finalize the location then you have to ensure that there is enough access roads at times of an emergency there has to be enough exit uh, plans or routes for people to exit or emergency routes for people to go or people to access designation of an emergency control point so when we do events at bigger venues so we have to have a dedicated or designated place where at times of emergency people can assemble or people with uh, you know any kind of emergency that is occurred will uh, can be brought to that place so that is designation of emergency control point and uh, designation of a single point of contact to liaise with any emergency services so we will have to uh, kind of within our team we uh, designate one person that that person is in co contact with the fire that person is in contact with the ambulance or the local authorities or the police information or anybody for that matter at times of an emergency so everybody in the team through their walkies would know whom to contact if any kind of emergency is done or for each kind of uh, an emergency we dedicate one particular person depending upon the size and scale of the event next is security officer and medical staff on site of the event if you're doing any big event i would say any event like more than 100 200 or 300 or 500 or 1000 depending upon the scale you have to ensure security office of course we do it as a part of our security medical staff on the site we can keep an ambulance and have our basic medical staff who can give uh, like a cpr or something a basic or the first aid uh, the first response that can be done that kind of staff can be on site or uh, if you know that hospital is going to be at least an hour drive then ensure that you have good amount of like at least one or two main doctors for their revenue when it is about an event for thousands of people consider an evacuation plan whether uh, public and staff should assemble and evacuate etc so uh, evacuation routes and signages are very important for example if you're doing it in a closed structure or you're doing it in open ground but if you put up a temporary structure ensure you have proper signages and with the information that at times of evacuation where do people assemble where do they stand so that if there is a collapse in the structure people don't get damaged and all those things so all these things are in case of fire or any kind of those things happen people know where to evacuate rather than you know kind of uh, creating a, a, a situation uh, a stampede there these things will help security if vips are also coming to attend the event they'll require special security planning yeah security is both one is for the artist or the vip who's coming and also for the mob or the people who gonna uh, no uh, fall or uh, you know kind of uh, come looking at the artist or the celebrity so to take care of both the people to take care of the artist to take care of the crowd both you have to have enough security planning placement of the resources equipment and people so it is very very important that we plan so um, when we do events of big uh, like big stage or big structure or people with uh, like if it's an event which is huge uh, divided into multiple uh, like uh, halls and things like that we ensure that we create one team each in each location of the event like if i'm doing a 10 hall event then i make sure that one team is there in each hall who will take care of each of this risk and they are like they are in charge and risk both is taken care so placement of resources placement of everything has to be very well planned how are you going to place your fire extinguishers medical equipment and all everything is it easy to access it should not be kept in a place where it is very distant and if any emergency happens itself like if the ambulance itself is coming like uh, it takes like you have kept it at the venue but it will take you 10 minutes or 15 minutes because it has come through the crowd and everything no so um, important or emergency services has to be kept very close to the exit or very close to the access of the people or very close to the stage so that the people are moved immediately without any uh, further like if there's thousands of uh, people who are there in the event we cannot literally move them in a few minutes that would take time so make sure the resources whether it is an ambulance vehicle is a fire engine or the extinguisher or the medical kit or the people who are going to help are positioned well and positioned in the right places media plan if an incident occurs a plan to deal with local so 
ensure that if you're doing a uh, we given to make sure your pr agency and every pr team is in place they're already there and it's a preventive plan is to keep things ready like if in case anything goes wrong they know how to handle it and so that doesn't create any kind of negative publicity it has happened in the past in a lot of events that uh, things go out of hand immediately and even without our knowledge it would have already been in the you know headlines of the news channels next we're going to talk about a contingency plan or emergency response plan so what is contingency plan so contingency plan is prepared in advance but is kept in reserve and put into action based on the reality such a plan offers viable alternatives to the main or current event plan and it is used to handle the problem arising a contingency plan has many sub plans each to deal with different types of problems which may arise every event should have an erp it is usually developed in consultation with professionals who are trained staff in emergency procedures like evacuation okay so what is contingency plan it is simple a plan that we have kept ready for example in fire if a fire happens then what do i do if uh, the structure falls what do i do if the light falls what do i do if the you know truss comes crashing what do i do if the artist comes late what do i do if uh, the uh, our dressing room is not ready what do we do if the food has not come on time what do we do if the license is not come to us what do we do so this is what the contingency plan is okay i am not saying that you have to be uh, uh, negative uh, you know thinking very negative but you have to have a plan to back up if this doesn't happen if and mostly like at times artists do come late it happens so what do you do you talk to the mc keep the audience engaged or you have another performance lined up so that those things are taken care so contingency plan is very very important and emergency response plan is compared to what happens there so the uh, most popular plans developed as erps are the following so erps are something it's like uh, it's a standard operating procedure kind of a thing that we do for each of the things as i said in under influence diagram that if this happens what do we do if this happens what do we do similarly so emergency medical response the first one so emr teams are central to all mega events and are first to respond to medical emergency emrs must be prepared to handle any medical emergency during the event such a team is compromised comprised of risk management personnel paramedic staff life saving and first aid equipment so as i mentioned it all depends upon the scale of the event if i am if you are talking about an event like olympic commonwealth or uh, an ipl things like that you definitely need a completely trained staff or senior doctor everybody present there as a part of the emr team including the risk management personnel so that at times of emergency they swiftly or quickly come into action and do the necessary second emergency medical response the emr teams are central so we have repeated this so really sorry for this so uh, of paramedic staff okay the next one is incident command system the ics which is also known as provides a management structure and system for conducting on site operations it is applicable to small scale daily operational activities as well as major mobilization so in the major event sites what we do is that we install an incident command system where all these incidents are reported it's like a central control team where uh, anybody who's handling different events in different places who has direct access to ics system they call on those ics numbers which is through a walkie or through the direct line number and they inform and from there the immediate teams are dispatched and those things are controlled in, including incident response team which irs is also very similar so irs works which is incident response teams with in sync with the incident command system which is there so the irs team is defined by nda or uh, ndma of government or uh, india as a combination of facilities equipment personal procedure and so at this control room you will have everybody from the paramedic staff to person who's handling the fire the person who's handling the uh, you know or uh, the security and everybody are in place they will put things into place or they will put things into action as and when they get instructions and as and when the emergency protocols are called for emergency management mail list so this is something that is required in bigger events is that uh, types of emergency looking at the type of emergency we have to prepare a mail list to who are the people that we have to get in touch with mostly things would happen by call where you inform them but yes there is a top, proper uh, documentation of things that are going to happen so you will have to keep a emergency mail list ready saying that the incident report is done immediately amongst all those people in that list so that uh, whatever they have to take uh, as uh, the legal or uh, the official uh, processing they will do it in their end. second evacuation plan so evacuation plan uh, is also uh, very very important we dis did discuss in the preventive thing also so under evacuation plan so um, the rapid movement of plan so this can happen everywhere even not even in uh, event but in buildings and everything so uh, emergency evacuation plans are developed to ensure that the safest and most effective 
uh, evacuation for our present at the site of mishap so uh, you have put uh, you know proper if the power goes up you're not able to see emergency lights are on you have reflectors on the floor giving you signs as to where you have to move so all this so and also if possible at the time of uh, people entering the event give them a small guide giving them uh, information as to where the fire exists and everything are and there is enough and good signages for exits and everything uh, if uh, in case of evacuation you're not supposed to use the lift you know about the stairs but you have enough manpower who are standing next to the lift and instructing people to use the stairs so the evacuation plan has to be prepared much much before and it is a part of the contingency plan traffic management yes uh, when um, at a particular city when you're doing the event and it's a particular location which is already high in traffic and you have thousands of people again coming onto the same road coming into the same location like events like aero show that happens creates a lot of traffic jump or it could be big concert that happen in the heart of the city creates a lot of traffic jump so you have to have a contingency plan for example if there's an ambulance movement that is going to happen during the traffic flow so you know where to take that you might have another uh, no a shortcut or another separate lane which is dedicated for the vip movement or for the ambulance movement so all these things has to be a part of the contingency plan stampede avoidance and crowd management this is foremost important as a part of so we will as per our anticipation as per our identifying risk level we would have a planned for example at the ticket counter or at the entrance uh, normally these are the, the places where the stampede or crowd uh, handling might become a challenge so you have to plan enough ticket counters you have to plan different areas of ticket counters different entry routes or different exit routes so there is no stampede there is no overcrowding depending upon the kind of event people would want to get the front seat and things like that so they kind of uh, you know uh, rush towards the uh, entrance and everybody is trying to get hold of the chair or the first seat etc so all these things has to be planned well to avoid a crowd and also to avoid stampede for example the hajj in saudi arabia and kumbh mela these are very very big examples of the large scale events that happen where there is huge crowd and anything any one step that goes wrong creates in stampede so all these things has to be uh, managed well uh, and so what you can do is you can do an holding area allow a crowd as much as that uh, when you can take and then once they are out then you uh, allow the another second set of crowd who are at the crowd uh, you know where holding area from there you release them then another set comes and you know they sit there which i think have i experienced in uh, tirupati where you have different holding areas so that the main temple doesn't get crowded so this is a, uh, one of the easy way to handle uh, any kind of stampede now let's talk about the third part which happens is like so we talk, spoke about preventive okay we can take care of it if it is taken care at that level very good but didn't happen then contingency what is the contingency plan like you keep an plan b for all the plan is so that is pretty much your contingency plan and then you have crisis plan this is like the mishap has happened you try to avoid how much over you tried but it couldn't be avoided but it happened so crisis can be defined as a situation which is if left unattended and can quickly lead to major disruption of the event or can call to cancellation so um, this can be anything the line of authority often changes in crisis and this also needs to be spelled out in the crisis plan the event manager needs to ensure who would take charge of which activity in case of crisis for example in case of stampede the press or media response to crisis immediately as a part of the crisis planning the public relation officer or the representative should be delegated for the job of management of crisis this person would be responsible for handling media issue etc okay sorry so crisis planning i'll give you an easy example so during the aero show 2019 um, in bangalore what happened is that uh, at the uh, visitors parking area there was a fire incident and uh, within a short span of time i would say within less than few hours uh, the entire parking area was on fire there were around 300 cars which caught fire so now what would have happened in so crisis plan one is the person who is there at that area who is supposed to be in charge yes identify him and see why what went wrong immediately or instead of investigating what went wrong see what can be done right to stop that fire so that it doesn't reach so proper communication has to be done so this is and at times of that who is the person who will be in charge who will the person who will take over that charge and take the decisions so you need that person in place you can't wait for permissions you can't uh, when things are like there is a fire that has happened the um, like there were 1000 cars parked 300 cars are already in fire so how so you immediately evacuate you do proper announcement people had to come you know uh, it was a good walk of you know 15 20 minutes from the main event area or to the parking area so people had to ru rush so the person who was there on the spot took an immediate decision of doing an announcement in that event area the people who were there who thought their cars might be at risk or visit the parking they all came running they immediately pulled back their cars so avoiding further damage to other cars 
and creating any kind of mishap. But yes, now without ma uh, making well, this was a public event, so of, automatically the press was already in the public. So uh, the event, the news went quickly to the uh, to the media, and it was all over the headlines. But if it is a closed event, but if you have uh, your own PR team or the uh, PR who's present there. So that person should be able to contain uh, the information or not information, I would say contain or curtail uh, the um, news and give it in a proper informed and planned way. So without creating any kind of a negative uh, publicity to the government or to the event organizer or to anybody for that matter. So these things will also form as a part of the crisis plan. So crisis management team has to be set up. Next, we come to risk control. So what is risk control? So it's a continuous effort starting from the event planning and ending after the event gets over. We've already studied how we can prepare different plans for preventing, controlling this kind of thing. So it's very important to keep track of things and respond to any issues or change. So that is what event con risk control is all about. So during the risk management process, following controls must be used. So monitor the context. Change in our event's purpose or organization or in the broader environment could impact on a risk in number of ways. Okay. So any change or deviation from the main event plan most of the times will cross some of the other problems. So we have to make sure that it is not deviated and we stick to the plan that is finalized so that any kind of such deviations doesn't create any problem. So how do you control risk is by not deviating from the main context. Second, monitor strategies. So if the context changes, we must adapt our risk management strategies to suit the changes. For example, we need to update documentation and any other aspects of our risk management plan if necessary after reviewing, the, after reviewing the incidents and the consequences. For instance, if you estimated two moderate engineering accidents and there were actually four, we may conclude that our risk assessment should be more precise in future and we need to review incidents to identify. Okay, so what it actually means is that how are we doing the reporting system? For example, uh, as an example which has been given that there are actually four people who reported uh, fatality, but we report only two people. So how do we control that? So and for, hence, what we have to do is we have to do a precise reporting. That's what the outcome of it. So monitor strategies. So the strategy that is applied is very simple, is that to be precise on the information record. So if there is a fire mishap that happens, you have to be very, very few. The fire mishap is at so-and-so area and on so-and-so region. So it has to be very precise. You just can't do a general statement. So that is one. Second is monitor risk communication. During a crisis, all communication planning is put to a test. Rapid access to relevant information is crucial. The site plan, map, good signage, and contact list become very important. So if the crisis is newsworthy, the media may become involved and any negative publicity of the event can be very, very damaging. So there are two things, monitor risk communication. At the time of risk or at any time of crisis, so the crisis management team or the event risk management team should have access to all the information as quick as possible. For example, the layer plan, the reason being, you know there are 10,000 people there, you should have the evacuation plan ready which we already discussed in the uh, contingency plan. So once you have, you should have the map because if it's a very big area, it's like spread across one kilometer, two kilometer, you know, like I know, uh, we understand that you would have known the venue really well, but still uh, they, it's not necessarily the entire uh, crew or the volunteers would know. So they should have access to it. You inform on the walkie, refer to that and then tell them the routes. So you should have that access, the site map, the good signage and everything should be in place. And most importantly, how the news or the communication goes to different people and to the media is also important. It should not go, it become like a Chinese whisper that I'm saying something, it's built on something that, oh no, there were 10 cars got damaged. Then the person says, you know, there were 1,000 cars that got damaged. Then they're saying the entire venue was on fire. So a lot of Chinese whisper situations might have. So monitoring risk communication is what, like how do we monitor and how do we uh, transform those information makes a, a place a very crucial role. So post-event uh, action and analysis. So um, what are we supposed to do post-event is also a very important part of this. So um, after the event, we must hold a full debrief with all the stakeholders, with everybody in the team, and uh, we ensure equality information is shared between the stakeholders and the team. So what worked well and what did not work well, what failures took place, for example, failures in communication system, leadership or teamwork, what like whatever they gave didn't follow. Uh, what incidents took place and the grading of such incidents, which I mentioned high, uh, low and everything grading. Class A hazard, class B hazard. You remember that example? Yes. So grading of the incident. 
adequacy of plans to support the management of all activity, adequacy of training provided. So was the training that was given to people to follow the safety norms, was it more than enough? Adequacy of templates used for policy procedure guidance. So different tables, checklist, analysis sheet, uh, influence diagram, tree structure, everything, was that enough? Uh, survey participants, people who surveyed uh, in terms of doing the uh, venue or the Reiki, some respected uh, supporters, verbal feedback, review media coverage, produce a written report with the recommendations for future event planning. So all these aspects has to be considered post-event action and analysis as a part of it so that you have a better information in terms of identifying the next is purely on your past experience and the report that you're going to carry, which is the risk management. This is over and an event is winding up. A risk management report should be prepared after the analysis. So after we do the analysis on those points that I mentioned, those are just uh, some reference points which is there in your curriculum, there could be more than that also. So you put everything put together, you put photos, videos and everything, you put the contact details of the person who was involved in the risk and then this report would help an event management. One is for future, for a similar kind of event, for a similar kind of venue. It would also help in terms of documenting if it is for the insurance process or, or the purpose of reporting uh, police and etc. or any kind of loss or damage. And it can be also shared to the stakeholders involved to prevent such things in a future event. So this is all about the risk management that we've been speaking from the last three, I would say we have done close to four sessions on risk management. So initially we spoke about uh, the uh, types of uh, event risk, then we spoke about the safety norms, then we spoke about uh, the risk assessment, then we spoke about the risk evaluation, then we spoke about risk uh, uh, preventive uh, and management plan, for us, that is our preventive plan, contingency plan, and so on. We spoke about the post-analysis risk control. We spoke about the risk post-analysis report. And with this, we come to the end of the entire risk management. Yes, it has taken a lot of time. The, uh, the reason being, we have given it very, very important, uh, being that you become event managers, but at the same time, this is equally important for you to know the risk involved. The reason being, not always uh, risk is, uh, you know, uh, I would say uh, involved in financial risk. Uh, financial risk also can be, to a certain extent, can be uh, recovered. But any risk or any um, uh, kind of uh, damage that is in cost of life cannot be recovered. Keeping that in mind, because we work in a very, very uh, stressful. So um, I had mentioned it earlier also, event management is one of the top five stressful jobs in the world. Uh, so at under high stress, we don't want you guys to collapse. If you have these things in mind, you will perform better. You know where things to be taken care. And this is a basic procedure that you have to do of analyzing your risk and taking care of it and reporting. Very simple, in three words actually. Plan, analyze, report. Very simple. And if these things are taken care, you are a good event manager who is taking care of end to end from event planning to risk. Everything is taken care. So thank you all. I, am, I hope uh, this has given some uh, kind of uh, enlightenment, or I would say not, not enlightenment, but uh, some kind of heads up on the uh, topic risk management. Uh, you will get more clarity as and when you get uh, be, uh, be a part of any uh, event uh, in the future. I would say as interns join some event, um, you know, we'll go through the entire process from the beginning till the end, and probably you'll be able to connect the dots about what I'm trying to say uh, in terms of how we apply all this uh, procedures from assessment to evaluation to post as a report and uh, etc on every step when we do the event yes we might not find time to do all those things but i would say take some time at the preventive stage just to make a list and analyze it thank you all have a good day and all the best mm -hmm.